As the CIA reportedly wrote, this was the intelligence coup of the century. Last week, a joint investigation by the Washington Post and the German broadcaster ZDF exposed how for decades the U.S. allegedly sp spied on friends and foes alike. It conducted this espionage through a company named Crypto AG, which produced encryption devices and was co-owned by governments of the U.S. and the former West Germany. Such as Espionage reportedly continued until 2018. China has responded to the revelation by accusing the U.S. of hypocrisy, for which the sky is the limit. So what will be the repercussions of the story? Joining me in Beijing is Zhao Hai, a research fellow at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, and from Brussels, Fraser Cameron, director of the EU Asia Center. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. I just want to give people who haven't read that article a quick timeline of the situation. According to the investigation, during World War II, this company, Crypto AG, got its first contract with US troops to build code-making machines machines. And from 1970 onward, the CIA, the NSA, and the West German spy agency, the BND, controlled nearly every aspect of crypto's operations. Now, in the 1980s, crypto accounted for roughly 40% of all the, dem of the diplomatic cables and other transmissions from foreign governments that the NSA coded, decoded, and mined for intelligence. In the early 1990s, the BND came to believe the risk of exposure had grown too great, so the CIA CIA bought out the German stake and kept the espionage going. In 2018, uh, the BN, in 2018, the CIA sold off crypto's assets. Both the CIA and BND have declined to comment, though U.S. and German officials haven't disputed the authenticity of the documents upon which this joint declaration, this joint investigation, was based. So, um, Mr. Cameron, let me go to you. What was your reaction upon reading such a report? Did this report, did this investigation tell you anything that you didn't know before? No, it didn't come as any surprise whatsoever. If you remember, there's been many other leaks by Snowden, Julius Assange, Chelsea Manning, and others which depicted very clearly the extent of espionage by the United States around the world. So. No, there was nothing new in this. I think the fact that it was a Swiss-controlled company is perhaps quite embarrassing for Switzerland, but the fact that the Americans were up to this kind of thing, that couldn't have been a surprise to anybody. Um, Zhao Hai, let me go to you. Um, you also study and follow U.S. policy quite uh, extensively and closely. Did any about the revelation that surprised you upon reading it? Not at all. I share the feeling that this is really... Uh, something very familiar to us uh, when we follow the U.S. Uh, continuously. Over the years, there's been so many revelations that what, what uh, the CIA and the U.S. <coughs> intelligence community has been doing. So these things are really not surprising to us. And also, what's interesting is that what U.S. is accusing Huawei and Chinese governments doing uh, is actually exactly what the U.S. Is, has been doing. Uh, for instance, the U.S. trying to prevent Chinese uh, capital to go to the startups in Silicon Valley, they're trying to cut off the, uh, the capital uh, investment in, in those companies. Uh, that, if you look at that story, the U.S. is actually doing ex exactly the same thing, investing in the startup tech companies, trying to get hold of the new technology and use that as a leverage to their own benefit. So I think this whole story, if anything, just proves what we have been uh, long suspected mm -hmm. and proves how hypocritic the U.S. has been. Still, there are some details um, about this report which caught my attention. For instance, the Washington Post story quotes directly from the CIA report that uh, it was the intelligence coup of the century. The CIA report concludes that foreign governments were paying good money to the U.S. and West Germany for the privilege of having their most secret communications read by at least two and possibly as many as five <coughs> or six foreign countries. Um, so. Mr. Cameron, how do you look at the kind of language that's being used here? It sounds as if they're almost bragging about it, you know, not only we're spying on you, but you're paying us without knowing that, you know, you're buying exactly the machine we're spying on you through. Well, I think it's true. I mean, it's, it's quite incredible that the foreign governments would buy equipment which um, the Americans and, and Germans were actually using to spy on them and paying for the privilege. So. That's pretty unusual. But the fact that um, this kind of spying goes on 
shouldn't surprise anybody. After all, spying is the second oldest profession. And uh, also, according to the article, I mean, the reach and duration help to explain how the U.S. Developed, developed an insatiable appetite for global surveillance that was exposed in 2013 by Edward Snowden. So, um, Mr. Cameron, once again, how would you explain that yeah, as, as human history existed, basically spying has always been going on. But what explains the insatiable and ever-growing appetite of the United States for intelligence? And we're not just talking about countries that the U.S. see as opponents or enemies, but also countries that are U.S. allies. Germany, for instance, basically, uh, after the, Ger the West German intelligence agency dropped out, it became a target as well, potentially. Well, not potentially, it did. I mean, the Americans bugged uh, Chancellor Merkel's phone, and when someone asked them why they did it, <coughs> because we can do it, that was the answer. And <coughs> it's not sure whether this was under sort of political direction or not, but intelligence agencies simply want to gather as much intelligence as they can. That's the nature of intelligence agencies. So I think, again, nobody should be surprised. And the bigger the country, often the bigger the capability. It's as simple as that. Does that justify what the U.S. is doing then? <coughs> Mr. Cameron. Well, no. <clears throat> Governments would justify it in terms of intelligence providing so timely information about terrorism and doing something to protect their national security. That's always a defense for spying. Well, according to this article, um, there is also this paragraph <clears throat> which uh, according to the article, which again caught my attention, it says the papers largely avoid more unsettling questions, including what the U.S. knew and what it did or didn't do about countries that use crypto machines while engaged in assassination plots, ethnic cleansing campaigns, and human rights abuses. <coughs> so, um, yeah, some people believe that they were doing the right, they were helping the United States doing the right thing by spying on other countries. But in the end, it's all about national interest, uh, not necessarily about a moral high ground here. Mr. Cameron, once again. There's very little morality when it comes to espionage. I mean, national governments protect their national interests and they use all means to do this. And throughout history, <coughs> intelligence has been increasingly seen as one way of doing this. So again, nobody should be surprised. Mm. <coughs> Morals simply do, don't come into it. Mr. Zhao, um, let me go to you here. Um, I think the, import, the interesting detail also about uh, Western government's reaction and their possible involvement in this. And we're not talking about using spies to spy on other countries. We're talking about using a commercial company and the employees of that company are for the most part kept unaware of what they were doing and sometimes they their life was in jeopardy because they were traveling to places such as Iran and this was docu documented in the article that one of the employees were actually arrested by the Iranian government uh, after suspicion of what this company was doing through this uh, through these machines came out so what is your comment on that well, I want to clarify two things. Number one, the crypto case is very different from what Snowden revealed uh, after 2012. Uh, the PRISM uh, program and other American new programs after 9-11 is actually not only uh, spying on other countries, but also spying on their own citizens. And they're collecting uh, intelligence through all the elect uh, electronic communications. So that's very different from the old style uh, uh, espionage. And they also, the crypto AJ is uh, actually doing the most of the business during the Cold War era. And those who bought those machines are actually allies or friendly partners to the United States. They trust the U.S. That's why they trust this machine. Uh, there, and the second distinction is that what uh, uh, the ways, the means of collecting intelligence is very different from the decisions, uh, decision makers to use it. So maybe, you know, it's indi in indifferent in terms of how you gather information, either through crypto AJ or through uh, human intelligence collection or through satellites. Uh, that's no difference. But what difference differ is that how the government is using it. For instance, if, if you have the information of uh, after cleansing or imminent threat uh, to global peace or, uh, you know, uh, to, to the general public, then you should use that information instead of hiding it or use it as a leverage to pressure or to, uh, uh, you know, use this information against other countries. And the U.S. has been proved to use the information for their own national interests 
And not only that, they use that information as a leverage, uh, as a leverage against other countries to blackmail other countries, to pressure other countries uh, to give up more of their national interest to the U.S. Hmm. Mr. Cameron, are you still fit to answer this question? I thought you were coughing a bit. If you want to react to what Mr. Zhao just talked about just now. No, I think that um, there is a moral dilemma if you are sending someone to Iran with a case full of new equipment when you don't know what's in there and you might be arrested for spying. That is, I think, a moral uh, question and that should not be done. But I think, you know, there are areas. I mean, in the Washington Post report, there was a incident of President Reagan admitting that they basically had cracked the cables for Libya because they knew that Gaddafi had been responsible for the bombing of a discotheque in Berlin. Mm. And that aroused suspicion elsewhere. So it's a very, very murky business, very difficult. But in the cases like that, where there's an act of terrorism involved, then I think, you know, obviously the intelligence is justified. Okay. Um, finally, I want to ask you this question then. Um, how about the, um, the use Can of... I say something here? Yes, please. I don't think crypto AJ case rendered into the uh, terrorist cases because the crypto AJ is the machine used primarily for official cables sending between diplomatic uh, stations across countries. And uh, that's, that's what I said, you know, very different from later on the prison program, which collect information from cell phones or emails. Uh, and those are more effective in terms of fighting terrorism, not the crypto AG. Mr. Cameron? Well, I mean, the crypto AG certainly was involved in the Libyan diplomatic communications, which confirmed that the Libyans had been responsible for the bombing of the discotheque in, in uh, Berlin. And that's why the Americans took retaliatory action there. So that's one clear case. I think there were others mentioned in the Washington Post article, too, that justified the use. That's not to say that the whole program can be justified. But uh, as I said before, that's what governments do. And we have to live with that. Mr. Zhao, you want to conclude with maybe 10 seconds? Uh, yeah, that's what the government do. But uh, on the other hand, I don't think the U.S. should, uh, you know, accusing China when they're doing it. All right. This is uh, and going on round and round. There is, uh, yeah, if you, if you justify that, if you, if you, the thing is, you know, the U.S. is uh, refusing to comment on that, and yet they're accusing other people of doing that. I think a lot of people are saying, you know, uh, basically, the reason why the U.S. is so angry about Huawei getting the way in many places is because then they don't have the opportunity to do that anymore. That is the real problem. Uh, anyway, we have to leave it there. Many thanks to my guests, uh, Fraser Cameron joining us from Brussels and Zhao Hai joining us on the phone in Beijing. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with Alex. Thanks for watching. You've got The Point.